Hey there, cats and kitties. I am the Blues Man, Johnny Blues. And with this video, I'll be discussing my thoughts on episode 14 of the anime series Ushio Tutora. And I actually thought this episode was pretty badass. Um, following on from speculations I put out there a little while ago now, I was very much wondering if we would see the commie sects, you know, uh, foursome, if you will, of trainees who are meant to take over the reins of the Beast Spear in the awakening of Hakuman no Mono. I was wondering if these characters would be gunning at some point for Ushio and whether or not they would work in tandem with him or whether they would be trying to uh, basically reach out and claim the Beast Spear for themselves. And we have two of them debuted in this episode doing very much <laughs> that very thing. Um, you basically got Pantsuit Rizzo and uh, Flight Jacket Kaniki, you know, straight out of Greece or something like that, in the forms of uh, respectively Hinoa and this guy Akiba Nagare. You know, Akiba, I'm thinking of Metal Gear Solid 4, Guns of the Patriots. Um, he's even blonde, you know, where's Meryl? basically uh cropping up in the series i digress um i actually really dug these characters for the prowess and uh, at least in the case of hinoa you know she's the first one to come after ushio and, and toro for the beast spear and she is so cocksure and she right sort of immediately goes to the proverbial jugular of ushio's whole persona everything he's done She's saying, you know, look at all these examples of what you've done wielding the Beast Spear. If you had been more knowledgeable, if you could actually hear it speaking to you and everything and, uh, you know, command it with actual some kind of prowess um, that we have all been training for, you wouldn't have let, you know, the Kamatachi die, the, the one brother. You wouldn't have uh, had to be up in the air fighting that, you know, yokai monster taking over the plane and everything. Just all this stuff, really getting right at the heart of his own concerns, his own sort of self-consciousness about whether he actually has the means and the ability to wield the spear. No matter how much success he's had at it, you know, as I say, she cuts right to the bone of, well, you could be doing a lot better. We've been trained for this. I have martial arts skills. She basically lays down the whoop ass on him, throws him for a loop, very literally. And of course, Toto's sitting there like laughing his ass off because now <laughs> the Beast Spear is running off, you know, through the fog, the tremendous fog, and circling this whole area as this chick walks off with it and, and manages to, you know, assure. Ushio that he's a failure, that he's not meant to possess this power and wield this power. And um, <laughs> all the while, you have the slowly awakening Hakuman no Mono, sending all these, like, yokai sperms all over the place <laughs> to go after Ushio and Dora, the wielder of the Beast Spear. Apparently, um, as long as somebody's holding the Beast Spear, they'll just go after that person. You know, they completely bypassed Ushio at that point. And he is finally sort of, you know, coming around and realizing, no, you know, I've been actually doing pretty good with this sucker. I should keep up, you know, with it. And uh, I still have this mission to complete, to find my mother and find out why she seems to be helping, or at least that's the yokai's uh, equivalent opinion, that she's helping contain Hakum and Omono. And I still am, you know, finding that to be questionable. I think maybe they got it wrong and his mother is meant to... Uh, put up a barrier and be sort of the watcher of this barrier to keep Hakuman no Mono at bay. But we see that wherever Hakuman no Mono is, he, she, it is sending out these spermicide freaking yokai <laughs> like it's nobody's business, um, these heel or whatever the hell they're called, which completely threw me for a loop because I thought we were going to see the one-eyed, uh, you know, sort of wielder of all this mysticism and, and uh, who went up again against uh, both Tora and, you know, I think Ushio's dad at one point, episodes back now, I thought he was returning, and it was actually this creature. It was actually spelled differently from how I remember it being in uh, the teaser from, you know, last week's episode. And um, I thought that was absolutely intriguing, that it has whatever this Hakuman no Mono is, whoever, and, and you know... It has the power beyond the barrier that seems to be containing it to send these yokai creatures out to destroy and dismantle the beast spear, even from within this barrier. So it does, again, call it into question, well, is Ushio's mother actually responsible for being the watcher in a protectoral fashion and framework, uh, you know, 
basically <laughs> keeping this entity safe for it to eventually reawaken and, and, you know, enslave the world or whatever it wants to do. As we've heard discussed in episodes previous, it wants to wipe out apparently all of its own kind, commit genocide against its own kind, and then enslave the human race and live off all of its despair and fear and sadness and, and all these kinds of things. And to see Ushio macking out, stealing very much this spear back and unleashing all holy havoc on this thing, you know, this creature with all the eyeballs and all the squid tentacles and I, as I say, you know, it's like little sperm-like creatures, whatever the hell they are. I, an eyeball with ears and little sperm tails and everything just really unnerved me, the entirety of this creature. And of course, you have all these kind of like borderline hentai tropes where the squid tentacles are grabbing the girl, you know, you know what? Um, at one point, Ushio actually unleashes the spear, launches the spear to save her, and it completely rips her clothes off. And, you know, with the exception of some expert editing, you would have seen all, you know, her bearing all. And um, just got very sort of interesting there for a minute. And, of course, Toro comes in as sort of the saving grace because Ushio lets go of that spear and the hair depletes and everything, you know, falls away and everything, and he's now not possessive of any powers. And so you need Tora in there to save the day. And again, I love how they're still very much playfully adversarial, but they're still very much in line with each other, you know. Tora accepted the name that was given to him by Ushio, as we saw previously, and uh, he's still going to come to Ushio's aid. And I really love that as, you know, this is all said and done and you have this very Sunday sort of, <laughs> you know, you know, going on her merry way and saying, uh, basically, it wasn't because I couldn't wield the, you know, the spear that I'm going to let you have it for now. Just wait. Time will tell. I'll be back for that sucker. You know, and she goes packing. Well, this is when we have, as I say, Flight Jacket Kaniki coming in there, Akiba Nagare. And uh, he's, you know, slick on his motorcycle and everything. <laughs> he's just kind of eyeballing Ushio and Toto, but Toto actually picks up on what I found interesting. You know, humans usually can't see yokai and such, and this guy is eyeballing the back of Toto's head, and he can sense it. So you have them going up against each other, and I was somewhat surprised by the fact that, you know, Nagare could actually trap Toto, for lack of a better term, um, you know, put these spikes in his hands and his feet, Toto rips himself apart. You know, we've already seen he can uh, function without limbs and have his limbs ripped off and whatever like that. There's an elemental process going on with these Kohami sect, you know, uh, trainees, where with Hinawa, it, it was like wood-based. And uh, with this guy, it's very much metal and like lightning and electricity-based, so that Toto's usual explosion of electricity has no effect because he's wielding around this little sort of mini spear, whatever you want to call it. And, uh, you know, they've had their eye on Ushio and Toro the entire time. They know the entirety of Toro's history as Nagatobi Maru, as all these other names he's been known as, as this very possessive, evil creature with all these tremendous abilities that would go on the attack of humankind 2,000 years previous, originating in China and all this stuff. They have all this factual evidence, even up to moments before he encounters them and he's known all about as well as the Kohami sect has known all about they're working in tandem and they want to try to understand why why are you working with the kid what what's going on <laughs> you know you say you want to eat him but you guys are going up against threatening yokai you're saving humans together. You're saving and and working in tandem with fellow yokai who at one point you thought were enemies, but they saw, you know, that you're actually working for the side of good or whatever it is. Why the hell are you working with them? Why aren't you attacking him? And I love Toto's, you know, he, he doesn't really know what to say, but he, he basically is like, there's just never a dull moment with this kid. I'm never bored. I'm having the time of my life. I was trapped for 500 years. Suddenly, I I, I like that, you know, basically, uh, Nagare is talking about the leader of the Kohami sect is under the suspicion maybe Toro's relating, finding relatable the human heart, the impetus behind humanity, the compassion of humanity. And in working so closely with Ushio, just out of his natural character, his natural 
you know, personality, the way he views the world. It's having a positive influence on this one yokai and other yokai and other spiritual, you know, characters essentially throughout the course of this series that as I've talked about and I've touchstoned in previous videos, I feel like Ushio is effectively building a cast of allies. And it's very interesting that this episode begins and the OP animation, while the song remains the same, there's a lot of new elements and characters being shown in that OP animation. Um, and some of them is just like, who are they? <laughs> you know, what's going on? Looks like you got scientists in uh, almost like a, a nerve underground from Evangelion. And they look pretty malevolent, you know, and everything's suggestive. Um, you got some of these characters who are going to be the trainees from the Kohami sect. And uh, as I say, you know, these being the first two, but we even hear in the dialogue that there is a third who uh, is on his way, so to speak, as stoic as he usually, I guess, is considered to be, he's still going to be after Ushio and Toto. It's going to be interesting to see how he comes at them. You know, will he actually try to go after them beyond the attack, <laughs> force Torta to lose his limbs and start, you know, spidering around with his hair and all the stuff like we saw in this episode, which was just like, okay, I didn't know he could do that. Um, I just thought it was balls to the wall. Awesome. And uh, definitely spells a very interesting, you know, sort of story arc to come, where now all of these characters who should be working in tandem with Ushio on the human side, now they're going to be just as big a threat as like Hakuma no Mono. And so no matter which way they turn, they can't win. They got hurdles coming from all sides, people chasing them from all sides, people who feel entitled to the Beast Spear. And um, he's going to have to hold his own. He's going to have to continue working with Toro. Toro's going to have to put up with it. Um, because as we saw, they were split up by the end of this episode. Ushio's on this bus with all these little spermicide creatures taking over, possessing it trying to, you know, careen it off. Pop quiz, hot shot. <laughs> What's going to happen? <laughs> Probably Toto's going to come in there and blast them and, and save uh, the day and everything. So um, that was a speed reference, by the way. But um, yeah, this was an awesome episode and it's setting up a very intriguing, as I say, story arc to come. We've already been on a very intriguing journey and a very exciting journey. And now we have new characters and the potential of Hakuman no Mono coming alive and you even see that foreshadowed in the OP toward the end of it as well. Um, and it's going to be very interesting. It's going to be interesting to see if Ushio can hold his own when finally the time comes to meet, you know, head on Hakuma no Mono. Or if he and Tora, you know, it would be interesting to see if they fuse, if they become some sort of hybrid in power to, you know, take down Hakuma no Mono, or if they work in tandem as the partnership has been evolving and everything so i mean this just excited the hell out of me i really enjoyed this episode and um thought it was really interesting seeing these new characters debuting as, as a hallmarking of a change in course where now we have again people who should be backing ushio for all intents and purposes they have the same goals essentially but they're all vying because they they have this chip on their shoulder and they have this own you know power that they can wield and they feel entitled to that beast spear and they feel like they're meant to be the integral factor when it's already been proven and even the Kami sex leader had you know been uh foretold to have said this that basically this spear chooses its wielder and it's chosen ushio <laughs> I was dying laughing when Ushio is basically like, are you sure with all these people, these four guys, uh, you know, men and women, whatever, that are much more attuned to potentially wielding you and more powerful and more cunning and more trained, you sure you want me, <laughs> you know, using you, wielding you? And then you hear that dramatic voiceover and it's freaking Torres <laughs> mocking him. No, you're not going to do it. You're gonna, I'm going to leave you now because you're so stupid. You're so paka. <laughs> this just had it all this episode. So, um, yeah, I'd love to hear from you guys in the comments below what you thought of episode 14 of Ushio Totoro. If you enjoyed it as much as I did, if not, why not? Let me know in the comments below. We can have a grand conversation about, uh, you know, anything basically under the sun to do with the episode. Non-spoilery information for people familiar with the source material and the previous uh, anime adaptations of this series. I know there are some differences here and there. But um, I'd love to hear from you. Whether you loved it or you hated it. And uh, if you're going to be looking forward one way or the other to what comes 
after this. So yeah, otherwise it'll be pretty much it for me on this. Hope this video finds you well, and I'll catch you all later. Peace.